All right. Okay, guys, we're going to get started. Um, so today we are doing session five on CSS and components. Uh, thank you guys all for coming. I know it's like in the middle of midterms week and it's raining and stuff, but um, yeah. All right. Uh, today I'll be one of your presenters. I'm James and she will also be one of your presenters. Uh, okay. So as a reminder, tokens, um, we replenished our stock very late because the CS department is slow, but uh, we have new plushies. So as a reminder, by participating, you get um, a token uh, and the most tokens in a workshop gets a prize for this workshop. So if you get like a lot, then please stay because then you get to choose from one of these. Um, although maybe not one of the big ones because those will be like grand prizes. Uh, and the top three most tokens in the quarter will get one of the grand prizes. So there's only two sessions left. So um, I would encourage you to participate because if we don't give these away, then we'll just like hold on to them. All right. And as a recap of what we learned last time. So uh, firstly, Anor and um, Andy taught us a bit of React, uh, Axios, so how we connect endpoints from the front end to the back end, um, how to map posts. So how do we basically take things from our database and display them all on a feed. Uh, and you know, lastly, how to connect endpoints, which again kind of goes hand in hand with Axios. Um, and they also presented a liking challenge on how to uh, implement liking within your, um, within your app. So the solution to that is a bit, uh, it's like a bit longer than what we have time for just in the straight presentation. So we have put them at the end of the slides for you. Um, also, if these aren't in the Discord, then someone please put them. Okay. All right. So what we'll be doing today, uh, we'll be learning about CSS, um, demoing some file organization and implementing styles. Um, then we'll talk more about components and props, what those are, and how they will contribute to the front end of our app. Um, and lastly, for our demo, we will actually uh, basically create these features within our social media app um, and basically enable you know, posting to a live feed. <clears throat> All right, so to begin with, um, a disclaimer. This is a really high level overview of CSS due to time. Uh, if you check out Hack School from this fall, we spend an entire like hour and a half talking about CSS and I have like 10 minutes at most. So <clears throat> just be aware of that. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so let's learn a bit about CSS. So what is CSS? Well, CSS stands for cascading style sheets. Um, you can think of it as a thing that styles your web page. Uh, and the reason that the name cascading is in the title um, is because styles override each other, uh, meaning that the one you last define is the one that'll take priority. So if that doesn't really make sense, don't worry, because we will um, you know, be talking or we'll be demonstrating how that applies later in the workshop. Okay, so how do we actually create a CSS file and then link it within our code, right? Um, well, firstly, we're just going to, you know, right click in the file explorer, uh, and then we're gonna create a new file with the .css file type. Um, so this is, oh, and then lastly, we'll import the CSS file into the specific file, uh, the specific JavaScript file that we want to the style to be associated with. Um, now that's a bit abstract, just, you know, seeing it as the bullets. So uh, now we're gonna do a quick demo with our current app. So um, let's see, over here, I have our current app pulled up uh, thus far. Um, and actually, before I do anything, uh, something that I think we might've, or we should have done a bit earlier is I'm gonna delete some of the boilerplate in this app. Um, right now we have a lot of files that, you know, we aren't necessarily using like app.test or logo. Um, and that's just cause it comes up with the default. So I'm gonna delete these three down here. I'm just going to right click and then click delete. Yeah. Um, and I'm also going to delete uh, app.test.js. And I think whenever, whenever you delete something, you have to make sure that, you know, you aren't using it anywhere. So I deleted like the report web vitals. So I'm going to delete that from index.js. Um, you know, you don't really need to worry about what these things do because, or at least for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we have, you know, our, our boilerplate up and running, more or less. Um, and uh, let's see, oh yeah. So now we're going to actually start making some styles. So what I'm gonna do, um, we want to basically, whenever we, you know, work in our app, we wanna make sure everything's very organized because the more organized things are, 
uh, the easier it will be for us to maintain stuff and you know continue adding features. So I'm going to make a new folder under source. Um, I just click this folder icon up here. I'm going to title it styles. Uh, and in addition, right now we have two CSS files, app.css and index.css. Um, I'm actually just going to delete app.css for now because most of this is boilerplate. Um, in fact, I'm going to CD into the front end uh, and then do yarn start just so, oh, yarn I. Eh. Okay, I forgot to install yarn, but <clears throat> I'm going to run our app so we can kind of see, um, you know, just guarantee that um, no breaking changes are happening here. I don't know why I went into this tab and I minimized it. Okay, so this is what our React app looks like right now. Uh, and you know, if you're worried about deleting app.css, what I'm going to do is I'll copy .app just because that'll be important for later. And I'm going to delete this entire contents of this file. And if I save, you know, nothing really changed in our app. And that's just because most of these styles were, again, boilerplate. So I'm going to delete app.css. And I'm going to go into index.css and paste in that .app. Um, style from earlier. Uh, and I'm actually going to rename index.css to something called um, globals.css. Uh, and again, since we're you know messing with the files um, in our app, we need to make sure that we are appropriately changing um, wherever it gets imported and whatnot. <clears throat> so right now there's an error. And the reason is because you know uh, in app.js, we call we imported app.css, um, which no longer exists. So by deleting that, all is well and good. Um, and lastly, I'm just going to move globals.css into styles. And again, this is because we want to keep everything nice and organized. Uh, and I believe now I need to update this file path. So dot slash styles slash globals.css. All right, cool. So we've successfully you know, made a CSS file, although um, we didn't really change any of the content yet. Uh, so let's figure out how to do that now. Um, now, how do we actually change the styles of elements? Uh, well, basically CSS has very specific syntax in which you specify the element you're about to change, um, put curly brackets, and then write properties of the specific styles. So what does that look like? Well, um, you know, before we get into that, some common properties you should be aware of are, you know, as shown up here, <clears throat> simply due to time, I won't be able to cover all of these, but um, a lot of them are, you know, fairly self-explanatory, such as background color, which changes the background color. Uh, I have linked in the slides like this, the official, um, you know, reference documentation for all of the possible CSS properties, but um Really, like I would say Google is your best friend when it comes to CSS styles because it's very, very hard to kind of memorize all of them at once, especially when you're just starting out. Uh, and of course, you know, later, if you guys are having trouble with it, then you can ask any of us. Okay, and here is an example of what CSS might actually look like in your app. Um, for now, just know that we are specifying that we want the, the CSS to apply to our app. And then, you know, inside the curly brackets, we have all these specific styles that we want to apply. So as a demo, just to very quickly show this, um, you know, here's our app right now. <clears throat> and if I go into dot app and I do something like changing the background color to red uh, and I save it, um, remember to save it. Otherwise, you know, your app will not reflect the changes. Uh, oh, nothing happens, <laughs> um, which I'm not sure why. App. Oh, okay. It's because I need to. I'll explain this in a, a second, by the way. But okay, and you can see that you know um, we have this red bar, and that basically indicates uh, what this this particular selector is changing. Um, which again, we will. I will explain a bit more about in just a second. So, uh, you know, how do you actually apply CSS style in your code? Well, uh, you do that with something called classes. Um, it was something I, I kind of just did. So I, I skipped ahead a little bit, but classes are something that you use for repeated styles throughout your entire site. Um, you specify it with 
uh, class name equals, and then quote, whatever the name of your class is in the HTML of your code, uh, or technically the JSX of your code, just because this is React. Um, and in your CSS, you specify it with a dot. The class name is not something, um, or the class name can be anything. It's like a variable that you define. So, you know, you can name it whatever you want to. So as an example, right, uh, if I have this div that I'm returning, um, we can specify the class name app. And as a result, the CSS selector app will, you know, affect that specific div. Um, so as a demo, uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and just uh, put in what we have. So uh, let's see, app. Um, so the reason I'm kind of, you know, cheating a little bit and pasting this is because uh, CSS actually takes a lot of time to get right. You kind of need to experiment as you go. So, um, you know, because we want our app to look a specific way, uh, we've already kind of done the work, you know, off camera, if you will, um, to make sure that the CSS will result in what we want our app to look like. Um, so all I did is I, you know, I changed this dot app CSS selector and I gave it things like a margin. I justified the content, aligned the text in certain ways. Um, and as a result, those things are able to now apply to what our app looks like, right? Like we justify content in Google Docs. When you justify content center there, it centers everything. So, you know, in a similar vein, we are justifying the content for this. Okay. Um, now, how do we use our own custom font? So right now, I believe uh, if I went into our React app, um, I'm actually going to delete this as well for now, just because I think this is boilerplate, right? If I added like, say a P tag uh, over here, maybe the hello, um, it's in Times New Roman. So, you know, that will be something that we'll eventually want to change. Uh, so. How do we use our own custom fonts? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google Fonts and choose the font that we want. Um, Google Fonts is like a website. It's just on Google. And uh, what we'll do is we'll copy the code from the at import statement on the bottom right. Um, we do not want the close brackets uh, of the style tags. And after we copy that, we're going to go back to VS Code to our CSS file. And we're going to paste the code at the top of the CSS file and then specify the font family in one of our CSS rule sets. Um, so, you know, that is a bit overwhelming. Uh, so, again, we're going to demo that very quickly. So, what I can do is I can type Google Fonts Open Sans, um, right? If I wanted to use Open Sans, and that will just pull up, you know, Google Fonts. Uh, and there I can really choose. Oh, well, let me remove this for a sec. So, this is what it should look like initially. And what I can do is I can go to say regular 400 and I'm gonna click select. So by doing that, this pane on the right gets updated. And then I'm going to click at import on the right over here. And I'm gonna copy everything in between the style brackets. Um, keep in mind, we do not want the style brackets for this. So once I have that, uh, I copied it to my clipboard. And I can go into our CSS file. And at the very top, I'm just going to paste that import statement. Um, so now if I decide to do something like dot app font family um, open sans, uh, then you can see the font has been changed. And if you really want to verify it, because sometimes it's a bit hard to just eyeball it, you can right click and click inspect um, on your web page. And then click this arrow with a box on the top left here. And what this does is it actually lets you choose, um, you know, the HTML elements in your site. So we can hover over hello, and we see that, you know, on the left um, right here, we see that the font is open sans. Uh, so that's just the trick that you can use as you debug. Okay. Um, now, uh, one, you know, final thing is variables in CSS. Uh, just like if you're familiar with C++ or you know, JavaScript, um, just, how you can just like how you can define variables there, you can also do so in CSS. Because imagine you've been working on your app for a while. You have a bunch of fancy hex code colors. Um, it might be a real pain in the butt if you need to you know, remember a specific uh, color that you want to use you know, way down the line. Um, so it might be easy for you to just declare a variable that you can reference. 
Uh, and typically, um, it's good to specify this at the root um, for good practice. Uh, the root is just a, a special like CSS selector tag. Um, to declare variables, you put two hyphens before it. And then to call them, uh, you write var and then put the entire variable name. Uh, so here's like an example, right, of all these different CSS variables we might have implemented. Um, and then, oh, and then in, you know, when we're calling it in something like the body tag, um, we will just specify it with var and then the name. Uh, okay. So as to demo this, um, I'm basically going to finish the rest of the CSS in our app. So right now it's a bit sparse, uh, but again, I'm going to reference my cheat sheet here with everything that we've already done. <laughs> uh, and right, so this is this is actually literally just the code from the slides. Um, like I just screenshotted what we had already created before this. But you know, here's an example of all these specific variables we are creating, like primary. Um, and then if I wanted to go ahead and uh, call it somewhere else, um, you know, such as body, then I am doing the same uh, by using the var keyword and then you know calling the variable elsewhere. So now if I save this, um, let's see, you can see that the background of our app, I don't know how well it comes across because the lights are on, but it's like a nice dark purple. Uh, and the reason for that is because body is just like you know the body of our app. Uh, so in the interest of time again, I'm going to kind of cheat and copy all the CSS. I will quickly walk through it. So you know we're not just, all left in the dark. Um, <clears throat> but what's going on here is uh, we're importing the font as I already talked about. Then we're specifying these specific variables um, for the root. Uh, this star selector is something called the universal selector. It just means um, you know throughout your entire app at the base, uh, apply these styles. And we don't want any margins or padding or anything. And we want our font family to be open sans. So that's what that's doing. Um, body again is like the body of our H of our website, uh, HTML and so on and so forth. Um, and then we have like a button one that I actually don't think is necessary. And yeah, so I know that was a lot. It was you know a bit. It's a bit overwhelming to kind of cover all of CSS here, but um, you can see now we have some you know rudimentary styles for our app, and this is really just setting up the base for all the demos that we're, we'll be covering in a sec. Okay, so that was a lot. Um, and uh, now we're going to talk a bit more about components. Um, okay, so the problem with components is that we might have a lot of code. Um, before I continue, could anyone tell me what might be a problem if we have a lot of like repeated code within our app? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it might be unreadable. Um, is there anything else that anyone could suggest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, right, if we just have a bunch of the same elements, there's no way to easily just update something uh, and reflect all that. So, um, you know, again, you guys did a good job. Uh, those are just common you know, problems within our, with, you know, that comes with that. Um, and it's something that we would typically like to avoid if possible. So a quick observation is that if you look at any app, there are certain parts that are really just the same format over and over, right? Uh, if I look at Reddit, um, this doesn't say my user, right? Okay. But if, I, <laughs> if you go on Reddit, uh, you might notice all of the posts have the same kind of aspects, right? Each one has a title, each one has a description, um, upvote, downvote button, and so on. Uh, same thing goes for Twitter. This is like an old Twitter screenshot, but you, you know, each one again has the profile picture, text, and some like icons at the bottom. Uh, and even for LinkedIn, you, you know, can see the same thing in the posts. So how is it that, you know, these exist? Because uh, if we were to implement this with our knowledge right now, we would just be kind of spamming um, a bunch of like the same uh, JSX elements over and over, um, which is not something we want. So the solution to this is something called components. There's a way to break things into specific parts that, that then get reused within our app. 
So what does it look like in React? Well, um, both of these screenshots would be in different files. Uh, and the left file would be like the component itself. And the right file would be where the component gets called. So on the left here, you can see we're just defining, you know, a normal like function in React. And on the right, um, we're actually importing the name of that uh, of that file, um, which is specified right here with the export default component. So this component is what is we're importing. Uh, and then we can actually just call it by, you know, putting it inside the angle brackets. All right, so as a demo, um, she is now going to create and use the feed component of our app. Okay, so I'm first going to start the backend. Have you started the backend? I have not. Okay. Um, CD backend. Cool. So, uh, wait, where is your demo? On the, on the way. Where's your demo? Okay. Oh, I mean, I thought you opened it. Ah, uh, never mind. Oh, oh. Just go to Google Slides and then press it to it. Okay. So now we have our demo pulled up. I am now going to make the component for our feed post. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new folder under the source folder. Um, this folder will contain every component that we're going to make. So I'll call it components. And under this folder, I'll create a new file called feed post. So this will be where we will be creating our feed post component. So we will start up by saying we are going to import the React library. Cool. So after that, we can start by saying that we're going to define a function using the function keyword, um, followed by the name for our component, which is feed post. Cool. So now what goes inside the return statement for our function will be everything that we want to display in our component. And one thing that you need to know is that um, for everything that we're going to return, you need to um, you need to wrap it up by using a single pair of tags. So for our demo, I'll be wrapping everything up using a div tag um, with class name um, feed post. Cool. So now we are ready and we need to think about what do we want inside our feed post. So the first thing we want inside our post will be the user. So I'll start off by saying I have a H3 header. And for the user, for now, I'll just be using my own name, which is Shiyu. And after that, we will have the content for our post. So I'll continue by saying um, div class name equals to content. And for the con oh um, and for the content for our um our feed post for now I'll just say the content will be something simple simply hello. Cool. So that will be the content for our feed post, and the last thing we want in our post will be the time when the post was posted. So I have one last div with class name, date container. So for the time of the post, for now, we'll just say it's 6.55 p.m. Um, February the 23rd. Cool. So now we're almost done with our component. One final thing that we need to do is to export it so that we can use it in other parts of our project. So export defaults. We post. Cool. So now we're done with our component. We can go ahead and add that to our app.js. So to do that, we need to first import the post. And um, 
now we can go ahead and remove everything that Andy and Einar has written for us last time. <laughs> oh, I can just comment it out because I need parts of it later. But yeah, we can now add our component to app.js by saying angle bracket, um, v post backslash angle bracket. Let's see. Um, yeah, so now we have all our posts. Every, uh, every post is, is with the name you and with the content hello and time 6 55 p.m february the 23rd but um now our feed post looks kind of lame because we don't have any styles for the feed post so i'll go ahead and add some styles to it so to do that i'll um create a new css file under the styles folder and name it to be feed.css and um, you might know what I am going to do next. I'm going to pull up the GitHub repository and copy over all the styles that we have written. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I think it's here. Starting from the free post. Cool. So one last thing I need to do is I'll need to import this CSS file into our app.js. So I'll do that by saying import. Styles. Cool. Um, yeah, so we now have a really fancy um, website. And yeah, that's basically it for creating a feed post component for now because we have some new problems. Let's go back to our slides. So now we can have lots of posts with only a few lines of code. There is another problem. That is, um, as you can see from our demo, every post has the same username, the same content, and the same um, time. That's basically saying that they're all the same posts. And imagine your Twitter to be something like this, each tweet, each tweet sharing the same username, the same profile picture, and the same tweet. Um, repetition is the worst, and we don't want that because we want every, one, every single post of ours to be interesting and unique. So the question is, how can we make some adjustments to our components so that it can be more dynamic? So the answer is we can use props. So props are what we use to customize our components. And there are basically information that you can hand off to a component so it knows what to do. Now, this might sound kind of abstract, so we will use an example to illustrate that. And to do so, we will go back to our um, restaurant again. Um, yeah, so let's say that our restaurant now has a very specific menu, and each dish uh, on that menu is made up of a set of ingredients um, that makes sense. And we want to make some improvements. We want to make sure that every customer can order their dishes exactly the way they want them. So we decided to use a system of recipe cards to customize each dish. So um, each recipe card describes a dish and lists the ingredients that go into making it. Let's say that we have a dish called pasta carbonara, uh, my favorite kind of pasta. And the ingredients that go into making a pasta carbonara is basically the pasta, the eggs, the bacon, and the cheese. Now let's say that I am a customer, then and I want to order the pasta carbonara. What I will do is I will fill out the recipe card with my specific requirements. For example, I like spaghetti, so I'll go ahead and choose spaghetti and, uh, as my type of pasta. And I like eggs, so I'll have four eggs. Um, and uh, I'm not a fan of bacon, so I'll have less bacon. And I'll go with regular cheese. So the chef, after receiving my recipe card, will use the information on that card to make the pasta. So in our case, um, the dish is the element, the recipe card is the component, and the ingredients are the props. Um, and of course, the chef is the react. So just like the chef uses the recipe card to make each dish exactly as requested, react uses the props that we pass in to customize the component exactly as requested. So in this way, we can create reusable and um, uh, we can create reusable components that can be customized for each um, situation. Um, this is just basically the same thing that we're creating different dishes from the same set of ingredients. So here is an example for prop just to illustrate that props are not entirely from, uh, unfamiliar to us. You have probably used them before. So this happens when we are trying to insert an image onto a website. We will be using an image tag with the source attribute. 
So what goes into the source attribute will be the link to the image that we want to insert. And for example, here, I want to insert an image of a happy Anya. So I'll be insert that link. So here, source is basically just a kind of prop that specifies what kind of image that we want to display. Yeah. So now that we know what props are, we can go ahead and use them in our project. So there will be two kinds of situations where you need to do with props inside your project. Um, the first one is um, you will be using props inside your components. You can do that by saying curly bracket, prop name curly bracket. And the second situation is you will be passing props into components. And you can do that by saying angle, uh, angle bracket component prop name equals to prop data and backslash angle bracket. Here's an example. This is a component called greeting. What it does is it's basically it will just return um, a header tag, oh, not, not a header tag, a H1 element that um, says something like hello and the value of the name. So what this um, component do is basically the first name angle bracket passes the props object as an argument to the function. Um, the first one is over here. And the second name over here with curly brackets is basically accessing the value of the name. And the last line over here is basically passing the string James as the name value. So what's this one with this component will do here will basically return a header that says, hello, James, exclamation mark. Yep. Yep. So that's all for what props are and how to use them. So now we can go ahead and change our components to add more props to it. So we'll go back to our, um, yep. So this is our feed post component. So before we add the props, one thing that we need to think about is what makes each post different? What makes each, pro uh, what makes each post unique? So we know that um, each feed post has different user has different content and also has different time. So that's what we're going to pass in as props to our component. So we'll do that by saying user content timestamp. Cool, now we have all the props. We can go ahead and replace all our hard-coded stuff here with the value of our prop. So for example, here, instead of every um, feed post having the name Shiyu, we can go ahead and try um, name, uh, user. And as for here, instead of every post saying hello, we can have contents. And also here, we can have timestamp. So that's all we need to do with our um, feed post.js. And we also need to change our app.js. So down here, where we just introduced our component, we need to pass in the value of the props to this component by saying, so first user equals to here, post.user. And contents equals to post.contents. And timestamp equals to post.timestamp. Cool. So now let's see. We have all the com uh, we have all the feed posts, each with different username. We have Nate, Satian, Henry V, whatever, hello. And we have different content. Um, some content, my new post, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna read it. And uh, we have different timestamps for each post. So that's basically what we did to um customize our components using props. So um I think that's it for me to create the post. Now, James will go ahead and create the user post bar. Nice. All right. Um, so now if we look at our app, uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, -huh. uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can also like instead of so we explicitly said uh what we wanted passed in here, but I'm pretty sure another way you can do it is like instead of this, you could just say props, 
And then later, um, when you're calling stuff, you could say like instead of a user here, you could say like props.user. Um, at least I'm I think I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good question though. Um, is there any more questions though before we continue? Okay, cool. Uh so right now this is what our app looks like, um, which is pretty nice. You know, we have all of these posts being shown. Uh, however, the only thing is uh, we aren't actually, you know, to actually create the posts, it's it's kind of bland. Um, like, you know, I can create them, I'm pretty sure. Okay, maybe not. Okay, I guess I can't. So basically, like, you know, actually creating the posts is kind of the bottleneck right now. Um, and that's what we will now be working on. Creating the user post bar. Uh, so I think, yeah, so <laughs> we're just going to do that now for the rest of our demo. Um, so let's see. Uh, so right now, uh, we don't actually have a component for the user post. So to start with, um, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a new component uh, in our components folder, and I'm just going to call it user post.js. Um, and to begin with, uh, what I like to do for every single component that I, when I first make it, um, is I, I import React and then I'll make like a very simple uh, component more or less. So the reason I like doing this, so something like that, and then I'll export. All right. And the reason I like doing this is just cause um, it kind of catches any mistakes if I messed up with writing the basic component uh, in the very beginning. So now if I go ahead and I call this in my app.js, um, right? So let's say I'll import it first, import user post from component slash user post. Uh, and then if I call it like, you know, let's just call it at the very top user post. You, we can see that, you know, Ugo Booga shows up. Um, and that's good because now, now that I know that the component, you know, at its base works, uh, now I can go ahead and, and begin actually, you know, um, implementing more complex features and whatnot. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh. okay. So what I'm going to do now is basically what we want to do is we want to take this input that Andy and Anar made and we want to, um, change it. So it is more, you know, styled to how we want it to look. Um, so what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to go back to user post and I'm going to start fleshing out um, what the actual component should look like. Uh, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'll make a div um, and I'm going to put an input here uh, and, oops, and the reason I'm putting an input is, you know, if we look at our actual app.js, we can see that, you know, for now, the actual way to, to add a post is also just an input. Um, in fact, I'm just going to copy this uh, and then I'm going to paste it in here. All right. So values message. Mm. Okay, cool. And Let's see. And then after that, we want an actual button as well, which will go ahead and, you know, add the new post. So for now, I'm just going to name it post. So I'm pretty sure if I say this right now, you know, everything kind of breaks. Um, why is that? This may also be something that you run into as you're debugging your apps. Uh, and the reason why is because of this. Um, I'm basically calling something and, you know, VS Code is looking at it and it's like, I don't know what message is supposed to be. So it kind of just like doesn't know what to do in it if like, you know, brain farts. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now start adding some props to this. Uh, we know that something we want to add is we want to be able to pass in um, a new post itself, which will display the message that the user is typing. We want a way to change that um, and send it back. And we also want a function that will go ahead and, you know, add the post. So I'm going to change the value to reflect that. Uh, so the value will be new post. Um, and when we change it, uh, let's see, on change, instead of set message, I'll just name it set new post. 
Um, and for placeholder, message here is fine. And uh, let's see. And yeah, so for now, if I save this, now you can see everything kind of shows up nicely again. Um, this one on the top is the one that's ours. And it, actually for now, I'm also just gonna delete what Andy and Anar did, um, just so we don't get confused. I'll comment it out. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Um, and it's nothing you know, particularly fancy, but uh, you know, this is just as a result from kind of refactoring our code into um, how we want it to look within the scope of this component. Uh, now the, the thing is we want to actually make it functional. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, you know, we have this div called post and I'm gonna make it clickable by saying on click um, and then I'll pass in an arrow function and then I will simply call add posts. Yeah. Uh, so what this should do now, uh, theoretically, uh, if I have not messed up something, is as we type, um, you know, we'll type something, and when we click post, uh, this component will look at add post, and it will say, oh, you know, we should invoke that function. Um, and what we would actually, <laughs> what we would actually be calling would be this function that we defined in app.js. Uh, go ahead and you know post the URL and do all that stuff. Um, so before I go ahead and test that, uh, I'm going to call our user post with the proper parameters or the or the you know proper props, I guess. So for a new post, we are going to pass that in as message. Um, and then for set new post, uh, I think. It's just called set message, yep. And then finally for add post, we're going to pass in as the function add post. All right, so now theoretically, theoretically, if nothing bad has happened, if I type something, hello, uh, my name is James, and I click post, um, nothing happened, what if I refresh? Yeah, you can see at the very bottom, uh, it got updated. So, you know, let me type something else like stack school and I click post. Um, at the very bottom, it gets updated. Now, a clear problem with this is, you know, uh, when we show our feed, we don't want to show it in this order. We want, you know, the most recent one to show up at the top. Um, so one quick fix we can do for that is uh, you'll notice that right now the feed is being displayed by us mapping um, posts, right? Well. Uh, JavaScript has this, this handy function called reverse. So at the very end of the map, I'm just going to do dot reverse. Oh. Uh, and now you can see that you know all the posts get displayed in reverse order now. So now we see the most recent one at the top. OK, but going back to the user post, um, you know everything is, is going great. Everything's functional now. Uh, now the only thing we want to do is we actually want to make it not just look like a box um, and a text. So uh, to do that, we are going to uh, use some CSS. So uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm. Mm, yeah, so good question. Um, so the answer to that is user post is a component, right? So theoretically, that means, uh, well, I guess it's also a matter of preference, but the way I see it is um, this is a component and we should be able to call this anywhere, right? Right now we're working on the feed page, um, but if later, which I think, uh, you know, next workshop, Nathan and Jenna will help implement, like if later we have a profile page um, and we want to, for some reason, invoke that component again, then uh, you know we should be able to pass whatever function we want into there and it should be able to do whatever we want it to do. Um, so the, the convenience of having all these functions in app.js is that we can immediately see um, you know, what is happening, right? Uh, yeah, so does that kind of answer your question? Are we able to break out the functions? Uh, yeah, I think so um i haven't actually tried doing that before but i would assume like you know it it kind of functions the same 
as like an actual component. Uh, like I see no reason why it wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't call it separating into its own component. Maybe the stance is on file. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the thing with components is usually it reflects some like visual element, right? Like we have this this feed, um, and it's like a visual element that we can see. Uh, so yeah, it would be like I think you could break it into different files though. Um, yeah. Uh, any other questions before I continue? Okay, cool. Um, so uh, back in user post, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start assigning some CSS to all of this. So in the top div, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a class name of message. Um, for the input itself, I'll put a class name of, you know, maybe message input. Uh, and then in this div that has the post button, I am also going to give this a class name, class name of um, button. All right. And right now that does not do anything. And the reason why is because we have not specified um, any CSS for those classes. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and actually do that. Uh, okay, let's see. So firstly, to begin with, um, I guess message. So message, if you recall, is the top topmost div. It's like what you know everything in our entire component is. Um, and we actually are doing not bad on time. So I can walk through the CSS a bit more. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a display of flex. Uh, and what that does is flex basically is um, a way to lay out in your CSS. And by default, uh, setting something to have a display of flex means that it will go like in a row, right? So you notice that before message here, well, I guess I can just comment this out. So before, right now we have message here on top and then the post on the bottom. Um, and if you look at our code here, uh, you know, this div contains that input, um, oh, which is the box that says message here. And then it also has this other div called post. Um, so what display flex does is it actually, you know, puts those things side by side as opposed to like in a column. Uh, all right. Now, after that, I'm going to give this, oops, I'll give this a width of 100%. Um, because we want the user post to basically span the entire length of our screen. Uh, so if I save that, oh, nothing really happens. But I'm pretty sure if I give it a background color, you can see that, you know, that is the div. Um, the div is like invisible typically because we have not done anything to it yet. Um, but that is what it would look like. And last, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, but I'm also going to give this, um, I'll justify content. Actually, yeah, for now, this is fine. OK, so this is our message. Um, and now that we have you know, basically laid out how we want uh, these two things here, we won't, we've laid out how we want this input to go and how this div to go. We want them to go side by side. Now we can actually get into actually styling you know, those two things. So if I go into feed.css, um, uh, if you recall, uh, message input was the name the class name that we assigned to this input um, element right there. So uh, what I can do is inputs have their own particular set of CSS. And so first I'll say, you know, outline is none. So it's kind of hard to tell, but there's no outline now. Supposedly, I can still see it. Well, there's supposed to be no outline there. Message input class name. Huh. Oh, border. Okay, so outline is none, border will also say none. So now there's actually you know no line around it, which is nice. Um, I'll give this a background color just of like white, right? So I mean it was already kind of white before, but um, and we might as well set you know the border radius to match what we already have. So I can say um, border top. Top left radius uh, will be 999 pixels, and the border top right radius will also be 999 pixels. Um, so now you can see it kind of has this like weird looking shape, uh, and the reason is because we, you know, basically set the the top left and the top right radius 
um, to to be those. I actually made a mistake. I don't think it should be top right. It should be bottom left. All right, so now it, it has that nice um, curve. And the reason I only did it to that side is because the end goal is we're going to also do the same, same thing for that post button. So it'll look like a nice little pill. Um, okay, I'm going to give this a width of, uh, and again, like, you know, I'm kind of referencing something on my phone here, but that's why it kind of looks like, you know, if I was normally doing this for an actual project, I would have to go ahead and um, kind of, mess around with each one of these individual CSS properties to see uh, what I would want it to specifically look like. Two. Wait, sorry, can you say that louder? Um, I mean, oh, actually that's a good point. Yeah, I think you could. Um, we'll try it at the end actually to see if that works. Uh, I mean, there's like a lot of different ways you can do the same things with CSS. Um, one example is like if you're familiar with layout, there you can use like flex as one thing or grid as another. Um, if you don't know what that is, then like that's okay too. Yeah. Uh, okay. So box shadow, RGBA zero 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 point two. Um. Yeah, I'm kind of just like writing some pre predefined CSS that we have already planned for this, but uh, three rem and then margin left. Uh, a lot of these such as padding or margin, padding is like what expands the size of something and margin is how far away something should go. So, oh. So now you can see this is what our, our post pill looks like, um, which is great. But now we want, actually want to, you know, Oop. We want to finally, you know, style the post itself, uh, the post button. So what I'm going to do is um, for the button, we have the class name of just button. Um, and in CSS, you can actually chain classes. So what does that mean? That means you can specify a class. So dot message, which is the overarching parent. Um, and then you can say if something has the parent class of message, followed by another class of something like button, then have this specific CSS. Um, so that's just something, you know, kind of interesting, I guess. Um, this one, I am, I'm just gonna copy paste because it's a lot more, but uh, let's see, message button. All right, uh, but in here, um, it is pretty similar to what we did for message input, actually. The only difference is uh, or the only significant difference is we have this one, this property right here called background. Um, and basically it's like a little thing that's built in that lets you uh, create a nice linear gradient. Um, and you can see I'm referencing some variables here that we define in globals.css. Uh, so now if I go here, you can see that, um, you know, everything, uh, or this button now looks a, a bit nicer, although everything looks still kind of jank for some reason. Um, Okay, dot message with, oh, justify content. Hmm, okay. All right. And then lastly, um, let's see. Okay. Uh, another thing you can do is, or that I will do right now, is I can say message dot button. And then um, if you do something in CSS, like a colon, uh, there's a lot of different things you can do. And one of those things that I find particularly helpful is hover. Uh, and what this basically means is it's like, if you have an element with, you know, that the CSS selector is being applied to, um, what should happen when, you know, it's hovered over? Uh, so in this case, you know, we could say something like, um, hmm. uh, you could do something like cursor like you can, you know, set your, your cursor to be a pointer or something, I believe. Um, and you can just do some other stuff as well. So I'm going to kind of hand wave, but let's see, transition. Uh, and also I understand like, I'm not really covering all these specifically. So, you know, these will all be available in our actual GitHub repo of the running demo um, for you guys to reference when you build your own apps. 
uh, I'm, I feel like I made a mistake somewhere in my CSS, like some typo. So I'm actually just gonna copy all this and see what happens. Oh, I think I fucked up. She's or I messed up. She's thing. Whoops. Um. Huh. Okay. I don't know why it looks so flat for some reason. So I guess we can go ahead and try debugging that right now. So maybe padding, padding in our message. Like if we give it like five rem, I want to see what would happen. Okay, so padding. Ah, uh, okay. So right here, um, I guess I'll change the background color so it's a bit easier to see. So this is what the message input um, class is, you know, being recognized as. Uh, and there's a property in CSS called padding, which basically lets you. It tells the div like how much to expand you can think of it that way so what i'm going to say like if i said padding is three rem then you know it gets pretty big uh versus if i said like you know one um then it's it's a bit more condensed so you know again you would kind of have to go through and and alter it to how you specifically want to do it i don't know why the posting looks like that uh but yeah, I mean, you know, I could, I will probably debug this for a little bit after just to see what's what's up, but I'm not going to take the time to kind of just like sit here while you all watch me debug it. Um, that like, as long as you understand the general concept, I feel that's what's important. So I'm just gonna continue on. All right, so that actually concludes everything that we have done today. Um, and yeah, please come see us if you got tokens or we won't know how much you have I mean, you can keep them, I guess, but like, I don't know why you would want to. And yeah, thank you guys for coming. Um, and hopefully we see you next week for our final presentation on uh, navigation and finishing up the rest of our demo. All right, so thank you guys.